Hello there, I'm Eric Reno, and this is a video for Tipsquirrel.com, the website for everything Photoshop, Lightroom, Adobe Camera Raw, Photoshop Elements, and Photoshop Touch. In this video, I'll be making this alphabet soup, or alphabet spaghetti look, entirely within Photoshop. I'll be using bevel and emboss, and one filter. The bevel and emboss I'll be using several times, however, so let's jump in and have a look to see how it's done. So first things first, let's go and create a new document, file and new. And you'll see that I've created this at 950 pixels wide by 950 pixels high at 72 pixels per inch resolution. And I've saved this preset as Facebook. Now, the reason why I've done this is that 950 pixels on its length or height means that Facebook doesn't need to shrink it down. So it's going to appear exactly as I created it. As a square, it also means that I can put this on Instagram. Let's click OK and get underway. Let's first of all create our background. So I'm going to click on the background swatch here. And in the RGB, I'm going to type in 179, 90 and 30. And I'm going to click OK. Then using Control or Command Backspace, I can fill that. Now let's go and choose the foreground color which in my case is going to be 244197147 and click OK. And we're all set up and ready to go. The font I'm using is called Porkies. Now Porkies is freely available for personal use and you can get it from the font. Now because it's free only for personal use, I can't give a download here, but there will be a link somewhere on tipsquirrel.com. So at 155 points, I can then click down and start typing. And I want to type tip squirrel. And you'll see that I'm doing it all in capital letters. Now this is a nice font. It's nice and rounded and it's a little bit jittery. But of course, with two R's in there, you can see that the R's are slanted in the same way. The Q, the U and the I are also kind of a bit similar. It's not random enough, so I need to get in there and start moving them around. To do that, I'm going to go to Type and Create Work Path. Now, if you're using CS5 or before, you may have to go diving around in the Edit menu for that. But in CS6, it's underneath the Type menu. Now I've got my path, I can get rid of this layer altogether. So I'm going to put that in the rubbish bin or trash can. You can see I've still got the path. If I come over to my menu here and choose Path Selection Tool, I can then click on each of these letters and move them individually. But not only that, if I now press Control and T or Command T on the Mac, I get the transform handles. So I can start twisting these around as well. And I can make these far more random. Pressing Enter will accept the changes. So let's click on the I here and control T and make that a bit more different. I can bring it down, of course. Enter, control T for the P and so on and so forth. Just using control T and the enter key. I'm being able to do this quite quickly because I've got a keyboard with some macro keys. So I've got two of them set up, one for control T and one for enter. So it makes the whole process a little bit quicker. Now you notice there I caught hold of the little piece in the middle here, which is our anchor, so that's why it wasn't moving. And let's just move this one down a little bit. I'm a bit conscious that uh, I'm going to run out of space if I'm not careful. I'm trying to squeeze them all in as best I can. There we go. But I know it does fit because I've already done it once before. And finally the L. And there we have it. Press Enter. And so now I've got all my letters a little bit more random. That R looks a bit high up for me. Let's bring that one down. There we go. I'm reasonably happy with that. Let's create a new layer to put these letters on. And now if I go over to my paths, you'll see I've got my work path here. I can right click and fill path. I'm going to choose foreground color. But if foreground color isn't available for you, just use the drop down menu there. And I'm going to click OK. And sure enough, there are my letters. Clicking off of the work path 
or take away the path actually on our document. Let's go back to layers and there we have it. Now we will need to add in all those little effects. So the first thing that I want to do is add in a bevel and emboss. So let's double click on this layer, bevel and emboss. And sure enough, I do want an inner bevel. I do want it smooth. My depth is 100, but my size is going to be 13 here and the softness of eight pixels. Moving down, all this shading is OK, but the highlight and the shadow, they want to be slightly different colors. So if I click on the swatch here, I can change this color and sure enough, 241, 218 and 189. I'm just using tab to go through R, G and B there. I'm going to click OK. Then on the multiply, click on that one. And the colors here are 212, 124 and 30. And I'm going to click OK. And I can click on the tick here just to see what we've done. Good. OK. And that's our first bevel emboss under our belt. Let's right click on this layer and convert it to a smart object. Now it's as if we're working afresh, but we can always get back to that original bevel and emboss just by clicking on the icon here. Yes, I do want to edit. And there is our original with that first bevel and emboss. I can close that down and back we go. Any differences that I make on that smart object when I've opened it up would have been put into this document too. Let's now add our first and only filter that we're going to use here. So filter, filter gallery, and under artistic, you'll find plastic wrap. Now the settings that I've chosen for this are 15, 13, and 12 for highlight strength, detail, and smoothness respectively. And we get this kind of gray piece on the top of each letter, which isn't very nice, but we can deal with that. What we're looking for here is to give it this kind of wet look. And this plastic wrap does that very nicely. Let's click OK. There we go. Now we need to change this so it doesn't look gray. Now, because this is a smart object under here, I've got this icon next to the filter gallery. If I double click it, I then get the blending options for that. And I can change this from normal to linear burn. That does nice, but a bit too much. So I'm going to take this down to about 80%. Click OK. Now we can see the difference that that's made by clicking on the eyeball icon here. That's before and that's after. Good. Let's add another bevel and emboss. So I'm going to double click next to where it says layer one in the empty space here. And sure enough, go into bevel and emboss. This time in a bevel and smooth is fine. And the depth this time is going to be about 184. It's a bit arbitrary these, aren't they? Next, down to size and 8 and 8 for soften. Again, the shading's OK, except for the colors. So under screen, if I click on the icon or the color swatch, my big button, and I can put in 193, 110 and 29. Click OK. And in multiply, a very similar color, a 204, 130 and 51. Click OK. Actually, the multiply shadow is slightly lighter than the highlight mode in screen, but it works well. Again, we can click on the tick here to see what we've done. It just gives it a little bit more definition and we can click OK. Now, once again, I'm going to convert this to a smart object. I'm going to right click and convert to a smart object. Now, if I wanted to change that original bevel and emboss, I would double click. OK. I would double click again. OK. And sure enough, I can change this bevel and emboss. Then if I close it, it would ask me if I want to save it. I'd say yes. That would be reflected here. And then that would in turn would be reflected here. So I can always go back to the very beginning. Now let's add yet one more bevel and emboss. So double click on this layer, bevel and emboss. This time I want it to be an outer bevel because what we're looking to make here is kind of the highlights of where it's sitting in the liquid. 
smooth is fine. The depth, 134. The direction wants to be down at this time. Next, the size is 8 and the softness is 11. Shading's fine. Let's go down to the colors and I'm going to keep the highlight at white, but the multiply color I'm going to change to 168, 71 and 10 and click OK and then click OK again. And there we have it. We've now written tip squirrel in these alphabet spaghettis and they're sitting in this liquid. Now it doesn't look quite right and the reason for that I think is that it has no context. We need some other random letters around it. So I'm going to just repeat the whole process again with random letters. So if I go down onto my text and then just click anywhere and type some random capital letters. Here we are. I can then convert that type, convert to a work path, get rid of that. And once again, I can use my path selection tool just to bring these, turn them around, control T just to turn them around and pop them in place. Enter, pop the P up there as well. And then the L I might turn. Now I'm going to do quite a few of these, but I'm just going to finish this row off before I speed the film up and leave you alone just for a little while uh, because I just want to show you what I'm going to be doing. There's the T in there, the C, good, and the B. Any second now, my apologies. Nice, yes, control T. Okay. Now I do want these quite close together. I want to have quite a lot of letters. There we go. Now what I can do is I can highlight them all just like so and I can fill this path right click hopefully it will say fill path no nope. so let's uh, create a new layer that might help and then fill the path with our foreground color okay and I'm going to click off of these to deselect them now what I've gone and done is I've made an action for creating this so if I open my actions sure enough there's alpha Betty and if I press play, it'll go forward and do all those actions for me in the blink of an eye. So there we have it. Now what I can do is I can just create more and more letters to build it up around the outside. I'm not going to make you watch all that. I shall see you back here in just a second or two. OK, so there we go. I've created some random letters around the outside and you can see that they've each come in under their own layer. Now I don't want to uh, push the tip squirrel layer into all the others, but the rest of them I can just highlight, shift on one, then shift and click on the others, and control and E, and then that's going to put them all into one layer, and that's going to be quite helpful for me. Right, let's just finish this off a little bit. So what I'm going to do now is going to go to filter, and then blur, and iris blur, and sure enough, here we go. We're going to go into the Irish blur and sorry, the iris blur. I call it the Irish blur when I'm being silly and it's kind of stuck in my brain. So let's just change this around and it's just going to highlight a bit more the central piece, which is where the tip scroll is written. Let's bring the blur down a little bit. I don't want it too much, but that draw will do me about six, five, six pixels would be good. I do want it in high quality and I do want to save mask to channels. Click on that one and click OK. And then it'll come along and pop my blur in there. Now, the reason why I saved it to channels, so if I go over to channels now, you can see I've got that circle there that was made by the iris blur. So if I press Control on the keyboard and then hover over the icon here, you can see that I've got this dotted square. It means that I'm going to select the pixels of that layer. There we go. Back to layers, create a new layer fill that with black so edit and fill and choose black there we go okay and then I can just bring the opacity of this right the way down all the way down right 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 down to about 9 or 10 let's control D command D on the Mac to deselect 
and you can see that I've just made this little bit of a vignette just to draw the eye more into the words that I want people to look at. And there we are. We've made this alphabeti spaghetti look using Photoshop, predominantly with bevel and emboss, but also, of course, with plastic wrap. Now, this action that I used will be available on tipsquirrel.com. I may ask you to tweet or plus or share in some way to get your hands on it, but it will be free nonetheless. Thank you very much for watching. I'm Eric Renault. Bye-bye for now.